So I was reading this article here on nextjs.org and it covers a couple of things that I really wish I would have understood better when I kind of first started programming. And these things relate to authentication as well as authorization and the differences between and how they're actually implemented. Now, how they're actually implemented, we're going to go over a few of those things in this video, but it's going to be a little bit specific to Next.js, but conceptually it can be applied to non-Next.js applications as well. But authentication and authorization, they're, they're not the same thing. And I feel like when you're first starting out, it's almost easy to use them synonymously with each other to whereas authentication, it's verifying a user's identity, which might not be super straightforward, but this is basically just saying that, you know, you're, you're verifying the user is who they say they are. And Next.js mentions here that this happens when a user logs in, either with a username or password or through a service like Google, like using OAuth or social login. And here it says it's all about confirming that the users are who they claim to be in order to protect both the users' data as well as the application from unauthorized access or fraudulent activities. So authentication is basically just verifying someone's identity using your application. There's several different strategies that you can use to do this. And this basically applies to any front-end framework. But Next.js mentions a handful of different options here. So for one, you have OAuth, and this is basically using a third party to share the users' credentials. So for example, the user often has already had a Google account or an Apple account or something along those lines. Well, you can use that third party. So for example, Google to be like, hey, is this user who they say they are? And then if they, if that user agrees to share their credentials from Google, then you can kind of accept that, okay, if, if they have an account with Google and Google agrees that they say who they say they are, then they probably are who they say they are and that verifies their identity. Now you also have a very, very tried and true method is using just email and password. So as I say here, standard choice for web applications where a user logs in with email and password. It's familiar and easy to implement. So I'm sure you've created accounts with email and password before. Now you also have passwordless authentication. So like an email magic link, I have videos of doing this in Superbase with Next.js or an SMS one-time secure code. It's like it says here, it's pretty popular because of its convenience and it can help reduce password fatigue. However, it does have the limitation of depending on the user's email or phone availability. And then you also have pass keys. So a cryptographic credential unique to each site offering high security. So there's several ways that you can authenticate a user. Now, Next.js mentions to implement authentication, you, you could basically do any of these different methods. And the way that you implement this is going to be different for whatever framework that you're using or your, kind of your entire tech stack. So I know in Superbase, they have certain methods of doing OAuth, certain methods of doing just basic email and password, and certain methods of doing like a magic link. And here, Next.js just kind of outlines that you might just have a, a email password form, and then you call a server action to authenticate the user to basically sign them in. Now, we have authentication, which is great. Most applications are going to need that. But there's also authorization. So the distinction here is that, okay, a user is who they say they are, but do they have permission to do certain things in your application or access certain data in your application? So here, once a user is authenticated, you'll need to ensure the user is allowed to visit certain routes and perform operations such as mutating data with server actions and calling different route handlers. So the difference here is that authentication is confirming a user's identity. Authorization is saying, okay, now that we have this confirmed user, 
can they perform these different operations? So for example, maybe you just have an admin user that can access the admin dashboard, but a regular user shouldn't be able to access that dashboard or perform any mutations for that dashboard. Or maybe an admin user, they can delete certain data within the application, but that should only be an admin user that has those permissions. To whereas a normal user shouldn't have those permissions. So both of these users, they would be authenticated within your application, but not both of them would be authorized to perform those different actions. Now, how does one implement authorization in Next.js? Well, one route is protecting routes with middleware. So middleware, I like to think of it as just software that runs in the middle of a certain process. So middleware in Next.js, it helps you control who can access different parts of your website. This is important for key areas like a user dashboard. And to set up middleware, you basically just create a middleware file. And then within that file, you can perform some different logic to allow a user to access certain areas. So here they show an example middle, middleware file and they basically get the current user. And then depending on that current user, they will allow them to access different routes within their application. So if they're trying to access the dashboard, but maybe they don't have a user, then redirect them back to the login page. So here you could imagine that they could also have some logic that's like, if you have a user and then they have a dot admin property that is set to true, then they should be able to access the admin path. But if not, then you can response dot redirect them to, I don't know, login or just the normal dashboard and maybe even send them like a toast message saying, hey, you must be an admin user to access this, depending on how you want to implement that and other security considerations alongside that. But you can use middleware to basically capture a request and run between the initiation and completion of a request. So before they lay it on this page, like they're trying to access this page, they've made a request to get this page. But before you resolve that, you can use middleware to run in between that process to then see, does this user have the correct permissions to access where they're trying to access? So that is one way, using middleware to adjust where a user can or cannot access certain pages or routes. Now, it's usually not enough to stop there. You also want to make other protections. So here they talk about in server actions, when you call a server action, you might still want to check the role of a user. And then here it's like checking, okay, if the user is not an admin, throw an error saying they're unauthorized to access. So not only are you protecting routes, but you're also protecting kind of your data layer. You're protecting the different actions that a user can do at those certain routes. Because, you know, maybe a user finds out how to get past some of those different protected routes, and then they try to perform these data operations, but you still have other security measures in place to make sure that you are most protected. So within an action, you can perform similar logic to this to throw an error if they don't have certain permissions. So they must be authorized to do these. And then you could do a very similar thing in route handlers. So if they make a get request to a certain route, you could check, you know, their session and see if they are authenticated to perform this request that they're trying to perform. And then in server components, you can do a very similar thing. Here it kind of checks, okay, it checks the user role within the dashboard component. And then it says, okay, if they are an admin, if that is the role, show them the admin dashboard. Else, if they're a user role, show them the user dashboard. And if they are neither, then show them an access denied dashboard. So you can have all these different layers of security in your server actions, your route handlers, in your middleware, in your server components. And this is just going to have those protections in place to have the most secure app as possible, the most robust app is possible against potentially malicious users. For some best practices here, 
It says prioritize the security of session data to prevent unauthorized access and data breaches. Use encryption and secure storage practices. Use a flexible system for user roles to easily adjust to changes in permissions and roles. Avoiding hard-coded roles, so making things dynamic. And then taking the security first approach to where in all aspects of authorization logic, prioritize security to safeguard user data and maintain integrity integrity of your application. So here it's kind of hitting on, you know, within your route handlers, within your server components, within your server actions, within your middleware and protecting routes, you can perform these authorization steps to really lock down your application a bit better. All right. So this was mostly just a conceptual video here going over authorization and authentication and the differences between them and how you can kind of implement both of them. Let me know in the comments below how you like just more of a conceptual video like this. You know, I, I have a lot of examples on all this stuff, but I just wanted to make this a little bit of a quicker video. So, you know, not spending an additional 20 minutes from here setting stuff up in like soup base and stuff and just kind of hitting the the concepts of these different things. So yeah, let me know how you like this. Thanks for tuning into this and I'll see you in that next one.